We all need healing. We are broken in body, mind, and spirit. And in his gospel, Luke shows us that Jesus will give us the healing we so desperately need. And here's how. Luke records Jesus' ministry in a different way from Matthew, Mark, and John. Luke's gospel is full of stories about how Jesus spent time with the poor and the oppressed, the captives, the sick and the blind, people who weren't particularly religious, people like you and me. And the message of Luke's gospel is that God is for everyone. God is for the broken, the people whose lives are really messed up, people like you and me. Jesus of Nazareth saw the pain that people were in and he anointed them with his healing touch. Jesus Christ knows the pain points of your life and mine too, and he wants to anoint us with his healing touch as well. That's always been his desire. Right at the beginning of his public ministry, Jesus made that clear. In Luke 4, Jesus quotes from Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus looked around at those listening to him and he said, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Luke's gospel is all about how Jesus fulfilled that scripture. In Luke's gospel, as people are healed of their infirmities, their eyes are open and they see Jesus for who he truly is. Everywhere Jesus goes, he heals the sick, welcomes the outcast, casts out demons and even raises the dead. And each time the spiritual eyes of the people are open and his crowd of followers grows and grows and grows. Luke shows us who Jesus is by the way he treated the marginalized and the broken. Luke's gospel is good news for you if you are feeling broken today. If your life is a mess or you're hurting in body, mind or spirit, or if you're feeling isolated and on the edge of things, Jesus wants to anoint you with the healing that you need. But not everyone was amazed at what Jesus did. The scribes and the Pharisees were furious at his ministry. Not only was Jesus bringing healing to the broken, he was also keeping company with those people who were considered unclean in Jewish society. How could the Jewish Messiah allow himself to become ritually unclean in that way? It was making a mockery of the whole religious system. But as Jesus said in Luke 5 verse 31, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But the religious leaders didn't see themselves as sick, so they didn't want his medicine. They didn't think they were sinners, so they didn't see the need for repentance. They were blind to their own spiritual poverty. And that was the heart of Jesus' mission in Luke's Gospel. He healed the physically blind to show people that there was something they weren't seeing. He served the poor to show people that everyone is needy. He raised the dead to show people that we all need new life. In Luke 6, Jesus gives the Sermon on the Plain to show people that the scriptures they've been reading was about revealing the kingdom of God, but it wouldn't look like any kingdom that they were expecting. If you are poor, you will inherit the kingdom. If you're hungry, you will be full. If you're weeping, God will cause you to laugh. If you're being persecuted, you will be honored. God's kingdom is not for those who think they've got it all sorted. It's for people who feel broken and unworthy. People like you and me. The doctor has come for the sick, not those who think they're well. But not only did Jesus minister to them, in his death, he became one of them. Jesus became poor. He became a captive. He became oppressed in order to set the poor, the captive, and the oppressed free. In order to set us free. Jesus doesn't just feel sorry for us in our brokenness. He identifies fully with us because he's been broken too. At the crucifixion, Jesus was taken from those who knew who he was by those who didn't know him at all. And ultimately at the crucifixion, no one understood what Jesus had done. In Luke 24, Jesus is mocked as he dies. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. His opponents didn't get it, but neither did his followers. In Luke 24, two of his followers followers are walking on the road to Emmaus. And in verse 17, we're told that their faces were downcast. And when Jesus comes and walks with them and talks with them, they still didn't recognize him. 
they were still blind to the connection between the Old Testament scriptures and the ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus. But then in verse 31, as Jesus breaks bread with them, we read that their eyes were opened. Their spiritual blindness was healed by the presence of Jesus and they began to see the scriptures in a new way and finally understood how the law, the prophets, the Psalms and the prophecies had all been pointing towards Jesus. And then later in Luke 24, Jesus appears to his disciples and eats with them. And we read this in verse 45, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Their spiritual blindness was healed. And so it is for all of us when we come into the presence of Jesus with all our brokenness and blindness and spiritual oppression and sin, he will open our eyes and our minds so that we can finally understand the reality of what he's done for us and give our lives over to truly following him. So bring all your brokenness to Jesus, leave it at the foot of the cross and receive his anointed healing in your life today.